Hello, this is uh, carrying on, I think, part three of the uh, notes on use of the simulator. And here we want to talk about the COG predictor and maybe, maybe get into the use of the heading line and comparing the two. Let me just see how far we get. Uh, but it's, it's mainly exercises with the simulator. And so the idea is to protect ourselves. And when we're underway, we're going to have a line projecting in front of the boat that's going to tell us where we're going to be when. And we want to not hit things that are dangerous to us. And one would be going crossing. One of the things that this uh, ENC charts are set up set up to protect, protect us with is uh, we can define a safety safety contour. And that's this, this line right here, uh, safety contour. And uh, you see that's a 5.4 meters, uh, um, maybe 18 feet or so. Uh, and that's defined as a safety contour on this chart. We set those up here on, uh, on this is the chart setup page. Uh, safety contour here, 5.3. We set it just under it, uh, to so it finds it. Okay, so that's we don't. That would be the alarm would uh, would trigger here. This is a, also a hazard. This symbol out here. This is called an isolated danger symbol. That means that, and that mean, and this and this. This could be a rock, a wreck, a obstruction of some kind. But in this particular case, vector chart elements, it is an underwater or a wash rock. They don't know which one. It's a depth unknown, depth unknown. And the reason it has this symbol rather than like a rock symbol is because it is an unknown depth and it's outside of the uh, safety contour. So any kind of safety or alerts or alarms uh, should be going off in, in areas uh, when, when one of these danger symbols is confronted. The other thing we could do is we could have a deadhead that someone has reported to us on the radio. In the radio we heard there's a deadhead out here floating around. We got a lat lawn of it. And then we can go, let's see, do I have this? I haven't. Let me try this. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. So we can then define some safety margin escape around this deadhead, this barrier, right? And then the alarm will go off here like this. And, and that's another thing that we could be warned of. And we can could define these however we want. Uh, and so here's the boat. And let me actually, if you just click, the, wait a minute, let me just click the cursor. Or let me, what happens if I just put the cursor on here? Ah, yeah, okay. So if you just put the cursor, now I don't have any engine going. I don't have anything going right now. It's just the icon of the boat. And it says, uh, uh, when you just put the icon, uh, put the cursor on here, it says a distance from the visible. That means um, there's danger on this boat at 747 meters. That means one of these things, this contour, one of this rock, or one of something like this, is within us, is within that distance. Without, we haven't done anything. So that's just something built into this program as a safety factor. Now I could go here and maybe click ruler tool and then uh, oh okay so you see that's going red that's going red and that is 752 meters and I think that's what it said likewise let's see oh here's a thing that I want to get to the a line this this single line not gonna be able to find these will it find this no can't find this. oh yeah no it does find that it does find the barrier so it does that and it would fire here because that's also the safety. The safety contour is always a bold line. All right, so that's the tool we want to use. We're not, we don't have to drag this around and look. We want this to happen automatically, and we, and we do that with the simulator. So let's go back. Before we turn the simulator on, that's, that's the things we're after. Let me go back here. Boat, boat, boat settings. Um, we have to have wind. Remember, this is a, even though we're going to turn the engine on and we can, we can either sail, we can either sail under the polar diagram or we can turn the engine on and go under power. But in either case, we must load wind and we must have a polar diagram and that we've got. But we also have this setting here that we have to check because it's always in, when you're using a simulator, you've got to bounce in here to see what's going on. And this says, this, is, this says here, use the engine. You know, use the engine if your sailing speed, if your natural sailing speed with the wind speed and the polar diagram is such that your, your actual boat speed then is less than three knots, then it's going to automatically crank on the engine 
and you start going five knots. Now, actually, for what we're doing, we don't really want that. You could do something like other places in the course. We've done tricks like we turn this up to 80 miles an hour, 80, 80 miles an hour. And we're never going to sail at 80 miles an hour, so then we know we're always under power. But here, for this type of work, we don't care if we're sailing or powering. Uh, we can do both, and, uh, but we don't want this interfering. Okay, so that's a setting that we've checked. Uh, th what's the other thing? Um, oh, okay, so there's some setups to do for these lines. We're going to use a heading line and a COG predictor line. It's called Reckoning. They call it Reckoning. The program calls it Reckoning. So let's go up here again. I could go uh, QTVLM, Preferences, and get to this page here. And then go to Boat, Boat. And so what do we got on the boat? Okay, the track we've discussed in earlier. There's two other uh, simulator videos. We, we discussed that one. We want the reckoning style for the time being. It's just going to be a straight line based on our boat speed. We're only going to look, say, a minute ahead. Let's say we look two minutes ahead. We're going to look two minutes ahead, say. And uh, this is, okay, this is showing both this and the cone. We're not doing the cone yet. And the specific length. Let's say that we make a short heading heading sensor, I mean, uh, not a heading sensor, a uh, heading line point straight out of the boat. We don't really need this when we're going to, when we don't have current, but uh, for now, let's just say that's 200. So that, I just, so we have some preset values. You know that these are where you go and fix this. Okay, you set those. Now, one other thing we have to check, preferences, go back to appearance, and then come down here, and then go to uh, heading line and this is not the default this is just one I'm recommending set this line thickness to 1.0 and the color here to black okay black now that's that and so that's a suggestion that's not the default but yeah you, you can play, play with it find out what you like then come back heading line and go to COG reckoning now that's the COG predictor it's reckoning forward and so forth now this again this also is not the default so I'm recommending you set that to 2.0 to uh, to 2 I think that's uh, and then uh, 2 point and then uh, then turn this and then hit the color here go to these little pencil menu here and this is just one I picked that looks good, moss. You can, again, decide how you like that yourself. Okay, so those are done. That's the only two things we're changing right now. And then we're not going to, we're going to have to have a couple more videos on this technology. But uh, I don't want to have to set those again or check them again. So that's that. Now I think, I think we're ready to go. Uh, we could, we've got wind. Um, yeah, let's turn the simulator on. Again, remember, you can do it two ways. You can come up here or see this command on a Mac. This is option S. On a PC, this would be alt S. So you turn the simulator on and on PC, alt S, or you use this button here. I'm going to just turn it on now. That will bring up the, you know you're there because it brings up the steering controls here. And then let's just quick check and see if we're doing anything. No, the speed is zero. That's good. The boat always, here's our boat. The boat, when you first start the simulator, remember you're going to always have to have wind. And when you start the simulator from first time, it's always going to be head to wind. So you see, we're pointed head to wind. I just want to be sure there's nothing weird like an engine turned on and we left an engine on and we're running at some speed. We're not. We're head to wind, so we're not going to sail no matter what. But let me now click this, click over here on this guy here to turn on the, this uh, uh, dashboard here. Oh, the engine is on, but there's no speed. But um, the engine's on. Let's turn the engine off for now. And then just take a quick look at the polar diagram. So here's our polar diagram. We're head to wind. What is the wind here? Now we can read the wind down here from the status bar. The actual wind at the moment looks like, well, it's about, well, here it's telling us it's, it's uh, eight knots. Eight knots true wind speed, and we're head to wind. And you see, here's our heading right here, and here's the wind. Here is the, the, the right polar diagram has been selected for us automatically based on the wind speed. Now, let's do this. We want to turn in, um, let's just turn here to the right a little bit and and uh, we should start sailing right so i'm going to turn just a little bit oh that's the other i want to go the other right 
Um, okay, so I'm turning into the wind, uh, turning a little off the head to wind. Now look, let me just stop right there and see where we are. See, we're just barely off head to wind. We had no decent, no decent sailing situation there at all. And let's just keep going up here. And this diagram over here tells us the optimum heading to wind. That's one of the beauties of a layout like this, once you've got a good polar in there. Let me go just a little bit more. So that's sort of right in there where the red meets the green. So now I know I'm sailing to weather as well as I can on this boat. Okay, and now here is the COG predictor line. And you see the little black stub right in here underneath there, but we don't care about that for now. And what I'm going to do now, though, I'm going to uh, let me turn left. And remember, you turn the boat. If I want to go left, I turn this ball to the left. And then I have just come down here. Now, if I'm sailing, I'm turning into the wind. So you see, I'm going to automatically start slowing down. Let me go back here. If I want to, oh, wait, stop. Here you stop here like this. Whoa, stop. All right. So what I want to do, I, I, I can't uh, drive the boat and watch these instruments here. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and turn the engine on and then maybe crank it up to a couple knots so I can have some steerage. Uh, like that. Let's see. Okay, so there we go. And so what are we predicting? Look up here at the top. We're predicting for two minutes ahead. Let's look three minutes ahead. Three minutes ahead is here, you see. And there is now four minutes ahead. And here's four minutes. And we're going, actually, we're going four knots. And, the, and look, the COG and the speed through the water are identical because there's no current. And so this means that this boat, if I, if I make this six minutes, let me actually, let me turn left a little bit here. Let me turn left so I can crank up a little speed without going aground. I mean, without cross firing off the, okay. So now, um, if I look six minutes ahead, it, it, well, six, well, let's, uh, actually, let's test this thing right now. I'm gonna just turn, turn right a little bit and you'll see what happens. Now you see when that goes down there, that's warned me. This is red and it's warned me that that's what's happening, right? So let me turn left and get back out of danger, out of harm's way, and then uh, slow down for a minute. Now that's just the, okay, and you click the bottom one to, to stop like that and you can drive realistically like that so it's going like that now that's that alarm now i can just tell you oh there's another way you can sniff around for alarms with the what's called the ruler tool right click right click and um, uh, go to ruler tool you see that you see that ruler tool going red when it crosses safety contour now is it going to go up here yeah, okay, it detects that too. Now, the ruler tool cannot detect, it can, it's, oh, that's hitting the safety contour, but it won't, it won't show you this rock. So, we have a way to look for the rock, which is a very beautiful feature. It's basically a high-end ship Ectus feature that's built into, uh, that's built into uh, QTVLM. And that is the danger cone. And uh, we can set that. We, in other words, we can change this projector line. In other words, this boat, right now we're projecting that this boat is here. And then in, what do we got? Six minutes. Oh, let me go six minutes. Well, what I started to say a while ago is when you have this set at six minutes, then the length of your projection here is a tenth of your boat speed. So if I right click this and say ruler tool, that's got to be 0.2. See, 0.2, like that escape if I if I crank up the speed to six knots you see let's see are we getting going okay there's six knots six knots now if I right click and do uh, ruler tool you see now this uh, looking six knots but that's because you can do the math when it's six minutes and it's very easily easy to do but it's always going to be where where this dot is at your given SOG, this speed here, you don't even have to do the math. You have to say, I know I'm sailing, I'm under the engine, I'm going this speed, 2.06. In this many minutes, that's where I'm going to be. Okay, so now let's take a look at the cone. So we can go back here, right-click the boat, 
and say reckoning style and turn to danger cone. Now that turns to a cone of a given angle. Uh, now you, okay, and also we've lost, we need our heading line back, and I, I know that we got to turn that on. And um, I'll show you here, I, I'm doing uh, Alt, I mean Option Command V to get back to this screen. Then I'm going to Boat. And you see, here's where we, it, we had already switched to Danger Cone. Here's where you put the side, danger, the width of the cone. This danger vectors, that's just a rectangle, a big rectangle pushing. It's like you're pushing a barge ahead, a big rectangle up front. But this is the one that's used more often. The danger cone is 10 degrees. And now what I want to do here is I want to see this. I want to see my heading line on top of this cone. And now 200 meters, not going to be long enough. Let me try. Remember, uh, 1852 is a mile. 1852 is a mile. What's our speed? Uh, okay. It depends. Now you'll change this. You'll change. I'm going to just say for the time being, make that uh, say 800, 800 meters. Okay. So there is 800 meters right out to here. And so now I'm seeing my danger cone here. Let me, in the meantime, while I'm talking, just be turn this boat around here now. And um, you see, I'm looking out six minutes. Six minutes is a normal one because it's easy to predict. So with a six minute going at that speed, that's, you know, my cone's a little bit long, but that's uh, my heading lines maybe a little longer than I want, but not bad. That's not bad. Oh, I want to stop. I overshot the mark. Now I got to go back to the right a little bit. Okay, my point, okay, let me go back a little bit more, steer the boat around there. I want to point right at that rock now. Now, just let me look forward here. Um, what do I have? Okay, I'm looking. Now, 13 minutes. Bang. Oh, well. Uh, let me turn a little bit. Anyway, the point is you see it. what's happening here is that this now, this cone will detect isolated dangers. Isolated dangers. So let me, let me, uh, let me put the engine on. Let me, let me just stop the speed for a minute to see where we're going. Okay, so we have that. And those are uh, very, very powerful tools. Now I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop here and then get this one going. And then I want to come back and turn the current on. And so then the heading line and your projector line are going to be going two different directions. And that's a fundamentally important. But for the time being, those are the basics on using the COG predictor line and uh, to set off alarms uh, of various kinds. Now, oh, I didn't do that. And next time I'll turn the real audio alarm on too. I didn't do that this time. I, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Okay, so that, I'll stop there for now.